Lesson 3-1, hopefully by the end of this you can say I know the following numeric properties which are reflexive, substitution, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. This lesson is going to have basically a whole bunch of different properties that um, you've possibly seen before, you've uh, discovered in algebra last year or even before that. But again, we're going to be using it in more of a logical way as we start to develop different theorems. So let's take a look at the first property. So is the reflexive property, which is A is equal to A. Basically, again, you're just kind of looking for if something's equal to itself, it's reflexive. It's If you look in a mirror, you're going to be able to see yourself. And so that one's fairly easy to, to notice. The next one is a little bit more complicated. And, and from my, my work last year, it's kind of the hardest one to basically to, to visualize and so we'll, this one will basically follow us for almost the rest of the year. But the substituting property which is if A is equal to B then A can be substituted for B in any expression. And basically what you're going to be looking for is um, basically you've you're going to have these step by step. So remember back to chapter 2 when we talked about direct proofs where we have if um, if A then B and then if B then C and then if C then D and so and what we're going to find out actually on the later in this video is um, the different types of proofs and we're going to basically follow step by steps and so the reasonings behind everything so what you're going to be looking for is one of the lines is going to basically prove that A is equal to B and then later on is going to use something else and replace a, all the A's with B's um, and so Again, it's going to become important, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, of, of basically looking at all the steps that you do and um, in order to kind of help you figure out what substitution is. And it'll make more sense as we go along. Next would be the addition property, uh, which states if A is equal to B, then A plus C is equal to B plus C. So basically what we're doing to this statement here is we're just adding C to both sides. So if you can think about your little squiggle problems that we've done back in algebra, and and it's a what I do to one side I do to the other. So if I add a if I add c to the a and then I add um, c to the b, then I get this the second statement here. Subtraction is pretty much the same exact thing again. If a is equal to b, then a minus c is equal to b minus c. You can just visualize your squiggle. And if, um, if, I, if I know that this is true, this A is equal to B is true, then I know that if I subtract C from both sides, then they, the balance will still be equal to each other. Multiplication property is similar. If A is equal to B, then A times C is equal to B times C. So again, just thinking about your squiggle, what I do to one side, I do to the other. Division property is pretty much the same exact thing, except for just one extra step in there. If A is equal to B and we know that C can't equal 0, then we know that I can divide both A and B both sides by C. And again, the reason for C can't equal 0 is because if you think about it, if you have some number divided by 0 and if you tried to plug that into your calculator, for example, like 5 divided by 0, you'd get an error, you'd get undefined. And we can't ever divide anything by 0, and so hopefully you remember that from last year. If you don't, all right, it's just a good refresher to know that you can never divide something by zero. And last but not least, what I'd like you to do for tomorrow is basically I'd like you to take a look at the statement. So in our triangle ABC, so right here, so we have a 90 degree. And angle C is equal to 90 degrees, that's what I said. And B is twice as large as A. How large is A? And so what I actually want you to do is we're going to come up with basically step-by-step -step reasonings behind um, what A is equal to. So we're going to start off with basically a, 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 a conclusion or as basically as we go along throughout the year, we're going to be building on proofs. Now at the beginning, we're going to basically um, give you step-by-step -step instructions as to how. So I want you to key into the left side here. Um, but all you're going to be required to do is basically tell me why on the right column here. And so if angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180. So how? why can I assume that? Why can I assume that all three angles of the triangle equal 180? We've dealt with a, a theorem or a postulate or a property that basically allows us to conclude that. 
Now, if angle C is equal to 90 degrees, then angle A plus angle B plus 90 degrees is equal to 180. And so we're using this statement up here, and we're saying, okay, that these two things are equal to each other, so why can I all of a sudden just plug in and replace angle C with 90? So again, think back to what I just said in the video earlier, that I have an A is equal to B. What did I do? And I want you to put that property or that theorem over here in number two. Number three, if angle A plus angle B plus 90 is equal to 180, then angle A plus angle B is equal to 90. So think about these two lines here and basically tell me which property I was able to use to go from this statement here to the then statement down here. If angle A plus angle B is equal to 90, which we got from, angle, uh, from 3, and angle B is equal to 2 times angle A, which is from our given up here, then I know that angle A plus 2 times angle A is equal to 90 degrees. What allows me to do that? Again, th think about our statements. Sorry, my mouse. Let's think about our statements um, up here and why I'm able to conclude this here. And then last but not least, if you can't quite see it, but it says if angle three or if three times angle A is equal to 90, which we got from up here, um, if we just add those together, then angle A is equal to 30. So why am I able to go from this statement here to this one over here? And I want you to put that in in uh, number five. So again, your Assignment for tomorrow and what I'm going to come around and check is I want to see this formula and I want to see these five steps here and we're going to go over them in class but I still want to see your initial uh, thoughts about what you think in each step. Why am I able to conclude step one? Why am I able to conclude step two or three or four or five? Okay, That's it. That's all I want for, for now. So we will see you next class period. Thanks for listening. Alright, bye.